What's going on everybody, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to show you how to deploy a VPN server in the cloud using Linode so that you can browse the internet securely from a public hotspot wherever you are, and also browse the internet from a different geographical region from where you're at. So, if you don't already have an account with Linode, you should go ahead and create one. Um, if you are creating an account today, go ahead and look up the Level 1 Tech's YouTube channel and use their referral code. I think it gives you like a hundred bucks in uh, credits, so you can play with all kinds of other stuff instead of just this one server. Anyway, uh, we'll get started. We'll go ahead and log in, and we're going to click up here to create a Linode. Um, for our distribution, I'm going to use Debian 11. You can use whatever you like. For our region, I'm going to use London UK. Um, for our plan, I'll use a shared CPU. It, shared CPUs meet all of my needs. I'm going to do a 1 gig of RAM, which is all we need. And we are going to set the Linode label. This is just for Linode dashboard use. So I'm going to call it EU UK My VPN. And then I'm going to choose a very strong root password. It's important to use a strong password. Use a password manager to keep up with your passwords if you need. We're going to paste that in there. It says it's weak, but don't worry. I'm deleting this server as soon as I'm done with the video. So, and that's all we really need. I'm going to click Create Linode. Password doesn't meet the complexity requirements. Okay. I will see you, Linode, with one weak password, and I will raise you with a good one. And this will take a few minutes to uh, provision our new virtual machine, and we'll come back once that provisioning is done. While we wait for the pr provisioning and the booting up of our virtual machine to complete, this is going to be our IP address and our IPv6 address. I'm going to go ahead and copy this address. I'm going to pop over to Google Domains, which is my Google, um, who, this is my domain registrar, so they also provide my DNS records. And I'm going to provide it a host name, a record type, which is A for an IPv4 address, and AAAA record is for an IPv6 address. And we're going to paste that IP address in there, and, um, we're going to click save. And now we will be able to access our virtual machine using that IP address. I'm going to open up PuTTY and I'm going to paste that IP address in there as well. I'm going to click open and then accept the SSH key. And the user we're logging into is called root. And then we're going to paste our password in there that we pasted. And now we're here. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do sudo apt updates to get a list of the available updated packages. And then once it has that list of updatable packages, we are going to sudo apt upgrade to apply the packages. We're going to use the dash y flag to go ahead and accept yes, we want to use the disk space that's needed. Nothing's needed. Great. So now we are also going to do sudo apt install UFW. This is a package for the firewall that we will use later. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up my web browser. And I'm going to go ahead and go to pyvpn.io. And I'm going to copy this one-liner for installation. Now, before we proceed with installation, I want to set my time zone. Sudo time date control set time zone me, I'm just going to set it to my local one, which is America Denver. And then we also want to set up our host name so we can access this a little bit easier. Sudo hostname control set hostname and then eu.bluebotpc.com because that is the uh, domain name that we provided to Google. And now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and create um, a user account to hold the PyVPN configuration files. That's just something I know we're going to need to do. So sudo user add space dash m to make a home directory. And then we're going to name it um, VPN user. Okay. So now if we do cd space dash root and go into the home folder and we do ls to list, we will see there's all, that there is now, besides the root user, a VPN user. Now I also want to, in case I decide to play with this virtual machine a little bit later down the road, I'm going to do user add space dash m and create a user account for myself as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and give that user account um, 
sudo permissions, give it admin rights, and that is sudo user mod space dash a to add space dash capital G to identify that we're going to be adding a group, the user, and then the group we're adding it to. So Matt and then sudo. And we'll hit enter. Oh, sorry. I did that backwards. Sudo Matt. There we go. That took correctly. So now if we do ls, we'll see both users. Now, anyway, we've set up all that. We're also going to do sudo. Did we install the firewall? It looks like, I just want to make sure, we did install the firewall. Good. So now we can go ahead and run our one-liner to install PyVPN. So here's the PyVPN automated installer. It'll turn it into an open VPN or a WireGuard server. We'll click OK. It needs a static IP address. That's fine. We're running in a cloud environment with a static IP. Choose the folder or the, for the user that will hold the VPN configurations. VPN user is perfect. That's who we'd like. We're going to use WireGuard because that is a super easy app on your phone. Doesn't drain battery. Super easy to use. And now we're going to use the default port 51820. Just the standard WireGuard port. Yep, that is correct. And now we're going to select the DNS provider for it to use. So we're going to select Google. Uh, mostly just because Google's who's hosting my DNS records. Why complicate it, right? But you can use whoever you like. Now we could connect to it using an IP address, but we're going to use DNS entry. So we'll arrow down, hit space, and then hit enter. And then we will provide it with that fully qualified domain name which is what we've already set the host name to, and we've set it in the Google Domains uh, dashboard. Hit OK. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Now it'll generate the server keys and everything it needs to set up the secure connection. Do you want to enable unattended upgrades of security patches to the server? Yes, we do. So now the server will keep at least the security packages automatically upgraded without our help. So now we'll hit OK. Do we want to reboot now? No, we do not. First off, we want to do sudo. We want to set up our firewall. So we're going to do sudo ufw default allow outgoing. Uh, there we go. That set up the default val the default rule to allow all outgoing traffic from our server. Now we're going to do sudo ufw default deny incoming. This will deny all incoming traffic to our server. To be able to manage our server, we need to at least allow SSH access. So sudo ufw allow SSH. Boom. Now, if we reboot this machine, we can still SSH into it and manage it that way. But now we also need to accept WireGuard traffic incoming and outgoing. So sudo ufw allow. incoming well we'll just deny we'll just select 51820 because that's the wire guard port this should allow incoming and outgoing boom okay so now if we do sudo you gotta have admin right super user do for everything with the firewall status to see the status it's inactive so we'll do sudo ufw enable yes we want to enable it and it didn't kick us out so that allow SSH rule, it worked. So now we've secured our fire, our virtual machine from a bunch of threats using a firewall. Super easy, right? So now let's go ahead and get PyVPN configured. If we do PyVPN, it'll show us a list of available commands. PyVPN space dash A for add, or we can type add. That's cool too. Let's enter the name of the client. I'm going to just name my phone. Okay, so now if I do PyVPN list it will list us a list of clients okay so now my phone is one of the available vpn clients if we do pi vpn space dash qr or qr code it'll ask us it'll provide the list of clients now which one would you like to connect with we hit one we can now display the qr code uh for my phone now if i take my phone and i open up wireguard and i hit the blue button to add and then scan from QR code I can scan that 
QR code, and it asks you to import tunnel from the QR code and to name the tunnel. So we're just going to name it um, our EU VPN create tunnel. Now I'm going to go ahead and sudo reboot this server right now. So that closed the session. Virtual machines, especially on Linode, reboot super quick. So if I'm still in PuTTY, uh, I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to restart the session. So that took a little bit longer to reboot the virtual machine than I was expecting, so I went ahead and just made me a cup of coffee. But I've come back, and we've rebooted. Type in root, and then we'll paste in our nice strong password that we've got here. And it looks like we're into our server again. So if we type PyVPN to just get a list of all the available options, and we type PyVPN space dash C, we can see that our, our phone, my phone, is currently actively connected. So now on my phone, if I, ask my, if I ask Google, what is my IP, I will show you. I don't know how well you can see that, but 178.79.171.124, that matches the IP address of the server that we've deployed. So now we have an active working connection between our phone and this data center in London. So now it's important to know that you have one terabyte of available data a month and all of your data that gets to your phone is actually passing through first that server before being sent to you. Awesome. We've now deployed our very own virtual machine in a different geographical region. I can hop on Netflix and watch The Office as if I was sitting in London. And I don't have to, I can watch it on Netflix or, for, or you know, without the geo restrictions. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Comment, like, and subscribe. I hope we did this quickly enough.